Some of you may remember a video I did a while back on lossless scaling, an application that allows you to use frame generation with emulator. Not too long ago, the developers released version 2.3, which aimed to improve visual artifacts, but more importantly, it is now possible to increase your frame rate up to four times the original speed using frame generation. Obviously, I had to see just how well this would do for emulation, but before we get into those results, I did want to take a moment to look into an inquiry from a YouTube user who asked about PlayStation 1 games. I didn't think to include PlayStation 1 games in my initial test because honestly, I just didn't feel like it really would be much of a test given most low-end GPUs can pretty much handle those frame rates even when you double them. What I didn't take into consideration, however, is the fact that the PS1, like many of its fifth generation cohorts, had several titles that ran at very low frame rates that were locked and never received patches. Even when it did receive patches, it caused a fast forwarding effect, rendering it unplayable. So I decided this time around that I would include it in my latest round of tests, but I wasn't prepared for what I was going to run into while doing so. Some of you may be familiar with how PS1 and PS2 emulation works, but for those who are not, there are two frame rates that you can view while running a game. The initial one always shows 60 frames per second, and this is used to make sure that the game is running properly on your system. The other one is the internal frames per second, and this is the original frame rate the game runs at. Why am I bringing this up? Well, frame generation uses the initial 60 frames per second when multiplying the frame rate and not the internal frame rate of the game. Other emulators don't work this way. What you see as the frame rate is what you get. So what is happening here? Well, when it comes to emulation in general, it is not just emulating the frame rate of the game, but it's also emulating the refresh rate of the hypothetical screen that it would be running on, which at the time would have been 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz, depending on your region. I don't exactly know why it has to be this way. I can only guess it's something that requires the emulation to function properly. Initially, I thought it would not be possible to use the four times option for frame generation because of this, but after doing some research, I found there is an option specifically available for the DuckStation and PCSX2 emulators. For DuckStation, this option is located under Emulation and Settings and is called Skip Duplicate Frame Display. For the PCSX2, you have to go under Tools and check Show Advanced Settings. Once you have agreed to the warning, go to Graphics under Settings and you should see an Advanced tab available. Select it and select the option called Skip Presenting Duplicate Frames. Hopefully I didn't lose you with this discovery, I just thought it would really be interesting and I felt it was information worth sharing. So with all that out of the way, it is time to show some results. Once again, I started with the A380 testing out some 5th generation PlayStation games to take advantage of the 4 times frame generation option. One game I was really excited to test this out with was Medal of Honor Underground a game that runs at a pretty consistent 30 frames per second. Turning on four times at a 4K resolution did seem to work great with the game and I suggest increasing the emulated CPU's clock speed as the internal frame rate does drop when certain things happen on screen. The Metal Gear Solid collection has had a bit of contention, especially for the first game in the series, which originally ran at 30 frames per second. As I mentioned before, when certain games are patched to unlock frame rates, they tend to run at an unplayable speed and Metal Gear Solid is one of the games that gets affected by this. With the exception of some strange artifacting with text during radio sessions, I found it to be fine when running it at 120 frames per second with 4K. Another game I was interested in testing was Silent Hill, and though it seems that there are some areas that are locked to lower frame rates, it does at least stay at 120 frames per second more times than not, and 4K is also fine. So the PlayStation games are not very demanding, but what about the PlayStation 2 and 6th generation games? If you watched the previous video, then you may recall Black being able to hit 120 frames per second consistently at the 1080p resolution. I was hoping to be able to increase the resolution this time using 4 times frame generation, and so far it is doing a pretty decent job of maintaining 120 frames per second with occasional drops that don't last very long. I often forget to include GameCube games in my tests, so I definitely wanted to take a look at Mario Sunshine this time around. This game seems to be pretty demanding for the A380, and I did find myself lowering the resolution to 1080p. I even considered going even lower in hopes of getting a more consistent frame rate, but it can at least hit 120 frames per second in most areas. 
So six generation games work well enough, but what about the seven generation titles? The last time I tested Breath of the Wild using the three times option for the frame generation, and it didn't do so well, but I had hopes that it would be different now that the frame rate was going to be much lower using the four times option. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it can consistently hit 120 frames per second, but it certainly doesn't seem to be as demanding on a GPU as it was the last time. I do have some other thoughts on this, but I'll come back to them when I go over the 2060. One viewer requested testing Wind Waker HD on my last video, and I found that it did a pretty decent job with the 2x option for 60 frames per second. I decided to try doubling the frame rate this time around using the 4 times option, and while I do think it does a much better job than Breath of the Wild, there are still several drops. Some of you may be wondering about another game I tested last time, Lost Odyssey on the Xenia emulator, and I already knew going in that 120 frames per second wasn't going to have the best results, but I did give it a try anyway, and it was as I expected. So that is pretty much my testing with the A380. It has a little more headroom with the 4 times option, but it's still not quite powerful enough when it comes to hitting the mark on 7 generation titles specifically. That brings me to my RTX 2060. Once again, I retested Breath of the Wild using the 4 times option, and I found something really interesting. At its default 720p resolution, Breath of the Wild seems to have consistency with the frame generation, but it's not at 120 frames per second, instead it's around 116 frames per second. When testing the A380, I noticed something similar in terms of where the frame rate lands consistently, and I have come to a conclusion that the emulator itself may not be playing well with the frame generation. Add in the intermittent shader compiling that has not stopped despite me continuously running the same path several times in one sitting, and it's hard to cite the GPU as being the issue. I also gave Wind Waker HD a look, and while it looks like the frame rate seemed to be higher when they drop than with the A380, the consistency at which they drop remained the same. I did not test the Xenia emulator last time as the A380 seemed to handle the 2 times option pretty well, but with the 4 times increase, I definitely had to see. Lost Odyssey seems to be running consistently with some small occasional drops. It's also the same case with Red Dead Redemption. Here I'm running around in one of the most demanding areas of the game and once again, things are very much consistent at the 1080p resolution. Using RPCS3, I revisited MotorStorm Pacific Rift. When trying the 2x option using the 60 frames per second patch, it couldn't hit 120 consistently. This time around using the 30 frames per second coupled with the 4 times option, it seems to be doing a much better job but it's still not consistently hitting the target frame rate. Demon Souls was a game I forgot to test the first time around and like Pacific Rift, it can hit 120 frames per second but consistency is just not there. Same goes for my first test with Fight Night Champion. I don't think these games have that high of a demand on the GPU, but no matter the changes I made, there's still constant drops. Initially, I decided not to use the frame rate limiter, but once I saw things weren't going as well, I tried to unlock the frame rate, set the limiter to 30 frames per second, and well, I really can't tell if things got any better. I think overall, version 2.3 of lossless scaling is a definite improvement. The 4 times option is certainly a great addition for those who have the hardware to make use of it. The input delay felt much better with this version in my opinion, but with the 4 times option I've noticed a lot more artifacting, especially when doing fast camera turns. I will definitely continue using this application and you can count on there being more testing when the next big update comes around. If you found this information to be helpful, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing if you have watched a few of my videos already. For now, this is The Core, your entertainment techie, signing out.